they yeah, have. Absolutely. So that's, that's totally true, Jerry. And so as always, if you've used good design and good design patterns, a nice MVM, VVM, you've got thin views and do all your logic. Uh, right. And a nice layer of abstraction between the two. Your migration process will be will be much easier. Much yeah, easier. Yeah. But this this one is essentially a rewrite. But you know you've got a great app. You know how to give a good user experience. So uh, it's still XAML and and your, your favorite programming language. So uh, some work and that you're going to need to do, but not a really direct clean migration path. I'm afraid. Okay. So I'm going to do the migration. What can I expect? So, yeah, what can you expect? So, yeah, an 8.1 WinRT app code, as I've said, every time there needs few changes. It's a Win, Windows 10 UAP is a superset of Windows 8.1 mm -hmm. WinRT. It doesn't so, mean nothing is deprecated. There will be a few oh, there's methods. There's a few changes, and, and I'm going to call out a couple of those when we get to the demo. But across the board, it's a very compatible story. So that's good. And your views, if you've written your XAML views in, for an 8.1 app, WinRT XAML views, they're going to migrate across fairly easily as well. You've got to have some work to do to actually kind of merge them into an adaptive UI. So the kind of way it, way it works on different devices is, is slightly different. But we, we're going to have ways of, uh, of taking those XAML views you've developed for specific targets on 8.1 and, and plug them as easily as possible into a 10 UAP solution. Got it. And there's other things that I'm going to call out in the demo, like um, phone-specific styles, for example, that have been deprecated. And as we said, the Silverlight uh, apps, uh, you're looking at a re-implementation job. OK. All right, well, let's start getting a feel for Let's go and do it. Do. Yeah, yeah, let's go and do it. So uh, what we're going to do is now take a, uh, a single-headed Windows 8.1 app, and we're going to move it over to UAP. OK. So what are the changes that we need to make? Well. First of all, if you take an 8.1 app that you've currently got, um, and you, uh, you, if you're hoping to go into Visual Studio and right-click on it and say upgrade to UAP, I'm afraid at the moment, with the state the tools are in this tech preview, uh, you won't find that yet. That's so the right. tools are not there yet. Um, but uh, we've actually written a PowerShell script that does a lot of, because it's, it's a lot of, you know, like change this attribute to this value and move this element and replace it with this element. A lot of it is very repetitive stuff. So uh, it was crying out for automation. So uh, we have got an upgrade to UAP utility. And you can go and download it yourself at the, uh, the URI, aka.ms, w10p-project-upgrade-utility. Uh, that, is that an as-is license? <laughs> that is, uh, you use this at your own risk license, absolutely, yeah. So we've done this, it's, we've used it, and it's helped us in our work, and we hope it helps you with yours. But if it doesn't work, don't write to me, write to Jerry. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. All right, well, walk us through the script. How, what does it look like when we okay, uh, use so, the script? So you, you just need to run this PowerShell script. It's actually, what we've got in here is two ways of running it. You, if you're used to running PowerShell yourself, you can just run the PowerShell script. All you need to do is set, uh, open a command window, uh, a PowerShell window, and go to the folder where your project file is in your package manifest, so the project you're upgrading, and just execute this PowerShell script, which you can do in two ways. If you're a power comfortable with PowerShell, you can run the script directly. Um, if you're not used to it, there's just a, a batch file, a bat file there. You can just execute that. And yeah, nothing if we're not oh, user-friendly. We totally are. I yes. mean, it's great. Now, it doesn't just edit the project file. No, it's also the package.apex manifest. Okay. So there's quite a few changes in there. And like I said, most of them are boring, repetitive. So we, we've automated all of that. And uh, um, you can, you can, uh, you can t use this to, to get a lot of uh, uh, long way down the road. If we have automated it, surely <laughs> the tooling team will have no problem. Doing yeah. So th the actual changes to the project file and the uh, app manifest, if you really want to know everything that's changed, uh, my advice to you is to do a file new project and create yourself an 8.1 project, and then do a file new project and create yourself a UAP project, and then use your favorite uh, comparison tool to have a look at and do a side-by-side -side comparison. We that's, should have done that's, that. We, funnily enough, what we did in yeah. order to develop this tool. <laughs> All right, so how do we know it works? Let's look at an updated project. Right. Yes. So this is um, uh, this is the package.apex manifest. So you know. You, uh, so no. Uh, this is the package.apex manifest. And once you've updated your project, you can then straight away open it in Visual Studio. And, and look what's it, new. It doesn't it, say Windows 8 on the, in no. the little parentheticals next no. to it. It says it, a universal. It says app yeah, platform. universal app platform. So it, straight away you've already got something that will open and uh, and will yeah, quite likely might even compile. So you know. <laughs> 
Probably not. There's going to be a few things you're going to have to fix. Now, so, we, are you going to walk us through what actually happened? Because it seems like a lot of magic. Are you going to well, talk, talk to us a little bit no, about No, I'm going to talk you... Uh, what I'm going to do is tell you about the things that we can't do. So, you know, uh, there are limits to our engineering capabilities. So, there are a few things that I'm leaving you to do. So, ah, nice. Yeah, so, uh, if you've got... And this is only going to apply to a, a few cases. But if you have got a package dependency, so your, your 8.1 project took a dependency on something like the Visual C++ libs here, ah, as you yeah. see an example. Yeah, which is, you know, if you're accessing a, a native library, you probably need that. The, it's changed uh, package de dependency. You now need to put the full publisher, the real, the the uh, mm. full name of the publisher ha needs to be included in that as the publisher attribute. So that one can't do that one for you. You have to go and manually edit your uh, project file in order to do that. Because who knows what package dependency? Exactly. Yeah, have. yeah. And if we had endless time and endless engineering resources, rather than me and Jerry, then we probably could have covered every one of them. But um, we'll leave we, that to you. We do have ends, as we it do. turns out. You might also need to change some of the capabilities. So um, the, uh, it, this is uh, into the package.apex manifest now. So again, a lot of the changes were kind of routine and repetitive, so we've done all of those. But um, this one, probably if we'd actually done a bit more work, we could have. Could have pulled together. But this is another one where you could open up a blank project and see the differences really easy. Yeah. Open up a blank project, add all those capabilities, exactly, and see yeah. exactly what you yeah. need. That's right. Now, some of these capabilities, it, it changes over because the the capability, the utility, the APIs to access like the pictures library, these special, these named uh, areas, pictures library, videos library, they now need to be prefixed with UAP colon because that's where the APIs sit. And likewise, you can see there an example of the uh, some of these extensions. Mm -hmm. So if you are, you are supporting a, a a, a protocol extension or a file file extension or these kind of things, then again you need to go in and, and edit those. Uh, you know, well maybe we could have done that. So also because we're converging now and we ha our, our tiles are going to be the same. So it used to be that Windows Phone and Windows had different tile sizes. Now that we have a single binary, of course we had to bring those together. That's the that's the next edit. So essentially what we've done with Windows 10 UAP is the tile assets have converged on the Windows Phone 8.1 model. So if you do a you know file new project for a Windows Phone 8.1 app, you get you get certain stock tile sizes, the 44 right. by 44, the 310 by 310 which is common to both 71 by 71. And there were slight differences. So if you are upgrading a Windows 8.1 or a Windows 8.0 store app, then you need to go into your uh, package.apex manifest and uh, change those uh, attributes to, to the new ones, the square 44 by 44 and, and square 7171. So if I don't have a package dependency or I don't have special uh, tiles, and if I don't have a lot of capability, it's possible that just your utility is uh, sufficient. It certainly, and it has been. Yeah, it has been. So uh, for quite a few of the demos I've been doing, I've actually been taking stuff from we've done previously, yeah. run the utility, yeah, and it just goes straight through. So yeah, it will work in a lot of cases. Let's look at the utility and see how it uh, would actually play out. Okay, so this is the first part of a, of a sort of a two-part demo. Okay. So let's get into this. Okay, so there we are. We've got our Windows Phone 8.1. It's an old favorite, the Contoso cookbook. So I'm just going to yeah. run this one up so you can just see. It's, it's not a real hello world. I've gone for something a little more complex. It's a delicious know. app. It is. It's pivot, and you see it's very rich. got lots of nice artwork, and you know, it's beautiful. And lot, there you go, and you can, you can select a particular recipe, like these are macaroons, and you go and look at the, the ingredients. Um, it's also, uh, yeah, it's, it's all the stuff. And it's also got nice things like you can take a photo. So you, Now, you're you running actually, Windows... Eight at this the, is 8.1. 8.1. Uh, running, it's running in the Windows 10 phone emulator. But yeah, you can go off. We can take a picture. Here we are. We're actually going to take ourselves a picture. Oh, that's a selfie. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. So this is a picture of our version of macaroons. So yeah, we're clearly. And then Delicious. it's also got the share contracts built into this as well. So it's a rich app. Very so we can actually share this with OneNote. And there we go. Yeah, absolutely nailed that one. So great <laughs> effort. Yep. So. <laughs> Yeah, nice. so that's the sharing with Quick Notes, and back from that, and we're back into the app, and, and then we quit. So that's the app. That's the one we're going to convert. So the first thing to do is open up a, uh, uh, go up to Windows Explorer, open up a command prompt. Okay. And then I'm going to execute my, this upgrade utility, so which I've stuck in a folder, C project upgrade utility. I'm going to run the bat file. This executes the PowerShell script. That's it. It's upgraded the project file and the manifest. No, no uh, long now, dialogue. No, that's right. No, it's nice and short. And now, immediately, Visual Studio's picked up, and hey, we're already wow, already a universal app platform. 
Uh, and this is how you could edit it if you need to do any more stuff. You can just unload it and then edit right from Visual Studio. But you're just showing us. You don't I'm have just to make showing a you. You don't have to do it. I'm just showing you. Some, this is the stuff, some of the stuff that our, our script changed. So just so you know what it's done. Um, but, you know, let's see if name can Is it okay it. for them to go in and, and monkey with the uh, script and make it for their oh, own? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Probably we should put it on GitHub, to be honest, and have people collaborate and improve it. This is the manifest. This is all the stuff that we changed in here. Oh, uh, the yeah. script did all of this. Did all of this for you, so all of that was done for you. Um, so actually, right, for this video. app, That's for this nice. app, it's completely automated. Now we're compiling it. First Whoa. problem: what's this? Hardware buttons does not exist in the current. The type of name says name. Back pressed in. Uh, hardware button. For what's the going phone. on here? So this is phone specific hardware buttons. So obviously this is an example. We're now gone UAP. Your script doesn't fix the hardware button. <laughs> no, it doesn't. So we now what we need to do is add reference to here's our extension SDK for Windows Mobile extension SDK, which has got the APIs, APIs in it that understands, immediately we've lost our red squiggles, we can build, right, we've got one more problem, okay, this is one of the things that our tool didn't do for you, so okay. now we've got an app manifest validation error, so it doesn't like how pictures library is, so this is because we're going off and getting pictures. Oh yeah, sure, it's a capability. So this is one of these examples of where you're actually going to have to go in and edit something else. Now, actually, I probably could have put this in the script, to be honest, because it would have been easy enough to find, <laughs> but I'm going to leave, ah, leave you some work. It's educational. This it's is great. It's educational, yeah. This is right. great. So here we go. So hopefully now, actually, we've got build succeeded. So we've got a clean build. Oh. Will it run? Ship it. Don't want to run it. <laughs> no, it. well, we ought to try and run it. Let's run it once. Here we go. Run it on the desktop. Um, and it, 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 it's nice now, windowed experience nice. there. Whoa! Oh, we got a type load exception. Okay, now this is, seems to be where we've broken it by adding that phone hardware support. Oh, you're trying to use the phone hardware button on a desktop, which doesn't have no, it. No, which it doesn't have it. So nice. we need to fix this. So, but before I do, I want to talk about that and some of the other issues. So uh, we'll come back to this in just a moment, and then okay. we'll fix it and take it the next few steps. Well, let's switch back to slides then and talk about the additional steps that we need to start thinking about. Yeah. So these are the steps in outline that you are going to th need to think about. And obviously, every uh, application needs to have different kind of uh, things. So here we go. Uh, additional conversion steps. First of all, you need to add reference to the platform extension SDKs. We did that. Yeah, like mobile or desktop. Yeah. Then we also need to, uh, um, we need to, and actually there's another step to that, we need to look at hash if and convert to adaptive code where appropriate. So if there's any uh, pound if code in there in your existing application code that was kind of expecting to be uh, run on either Windows Phone or on desktop, you need to look at that and remember this, we now need to change this thing called adaptive code. We don't want to use pound ifs because that implies multiple binaries, we want That's to right. bring it together. There's a couple of deprecated APIs, not many. Mm -hmm. We'll see an example of that in a moment. You need to look at your XAML styles, particularly if you come from a phone app, you use one of the phone templates to create your, your new project in 8.1. There's some styles in there that were phone only, so we need to converge on the, the converged UAP set of styles that built into Visual Studio. You also need to look at the charms bar. So remember the charms bar for uh, desktop uh, windows, you know, yeah. where you have uh, app, app right. settings, swipe from the right, and search was on there. Um, app settings was on there. So and swipe sharing, from the right in Windows 10 doesn't bring up the charms. There's no charms bar. There is at all. no charms bar on Windows 10. So uh, basically, you need to in, add UI into your app to. So you don't need to change any of the code that kind of worked with uh, apps with your app settings or or your sharing through that expected the charms bar to be there. But you just need to put some UI on your app to enable to the user to get to those experiences. Mm -hmm. And finally, last, last but not least, you need to look at the UI that you've converted and make sure you uh, do a little bit of work to make sure it looks great on all the device families where you want this thing to After run. all, your phone app is now running on the desktop. Yep. So we need to make sure it looks awesome in all yep. the locations. So a bit more detail on each of those. This is first, this is where you need to add ref for your platform extension SDKs if you need to. I've already did, did that in the demo. X, Xbox might show up there. That's right, yeah, so in the tech bits we've got just the desktop and the mobile are on there, but other, others will appear on there as well. And just to reiterate this point, adding these device family extension SDKs, if, you, if we add the, the Xbox SDK when it turns up, yeah. it's not going to break, it doesn't mean your app won't run anymore on the other platforms. Right. So it, that's totally, make sure you don't make that mistake. What about these, yeah, pound if? So this is the, the typical example, and actually the kind of one we've been grappling with for this sample. Ah, uh, yeah. So this is 
the, a lot of the code you kind of see in 8.1 apps, particularly um, universal ones where you've got shared code. If it's a Windows Phone app, then you need to hook up an event handler for hardware buttons backpressed. Um, if it's not a Windows Phone app, then we're kind of expecting that it might be used with keyboard and mouse, so there's some code that applies to that scenario. So that's kind of where we were with 8.1. It was one or the other. In fact, in uh, this, this confirms that there has to be two binaries because in yeah. one case it will, it, will, it will build to the if, in the other case it will build to the else. Yeah, and the point, about, the point about the pound if, of course, is these are compiler conditions. So at compile time, we're only including some code. Yeah. So the compiled output will only have one or the or other of these. Now, our compiled output in a Windows 10 UAP app needs to have both of these cases in it, and it needs to be switched at runtime mm so that the phone hardware, the phone hardware button stuff is active on when it's running on a phone app and your mouse and keyboard stuff is active when it's running on a on a desktop PC tablet stuff. So, so show us what that syntax would look like then if it's not is, a pound if. No, this is, the, this is the kind of runtime equivalent of that. It's an API called windows.foundation.metadata.api information and it has a whole bunch of methods on it but for our case, this, the first one I want to look at here is is type present. So you can look and say, okay, and is type present means that at runtime, is this API not only, you know, is it, is it present and, and implemented, is it actionable? And so if it is, that's kind of a shorthand way, a longhand way of saying, yeah, I'm running on a phone. Yeah. yeah? This uh, is brilliant so because it gives me one binary yep. and I can have all the logic.